Yeah. I mean, we are kind of all part of the family right now. It is nice, though, that you really get to see, you know, the result of what you did. Both of them are okay, thanks to you. Oh, yes. We're gonna have a Help Nanako with our homework segment soon. I wonder if I'll be able to do that and also make all the models. I should probably still have time. So I'm gonna need 10 more nights of model making, since each model has, um, yeah, take some... Oh, well, that's depressing. Thanks for telling me about that. Yeah, this is basically the game telling you you should max out everyone's social links while you still can. You are very quickly running out of time. Uh, but anyway, I'll need 10 nights. Huh, I guess everyone at school saying different things now. Yes, yeah, snow has its uses, like making the girl I have a crush on cold. Aha, uh -huh, today is a movie day, but... A sun is available, so I can do that, but make sure you talk to Kashiwagi now. So in my first time playing this, I missed this quest. This was the one quest in the entire game that I missed. And that really, really annoys me. Three. Okay, let's go. Well, we see them while we're fighting in battles, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I actually am not sure of this, but apparently the answer is B. That's the one that I wasn't actually considering at all. Oh yes, yes, all the time. It's not like we live in a world built on it. Oh, okay, interesting. I I am almost certain that, um, yeah, this is actually Latin. It literally means mask. Okay, well, that also is very fitting to what we've been doing, <laughs> because we summon things from those all the time. Okay, yes, all and gods. And in this case, the answer is Rome. I think I've actually been there. Yes, I, I actually did go there when I went to Rome uh, in 2018. And this one is a bit less ridiculous than the others, thankfully. But that completes Kashiwaki's special less... Huh, okay. You know, that actually reminds me, like, a school swimsuit being in a random grab bag of... There's apparently, and I only know this due to, like, Wikipedia's page on Made in Japan English terms, but apparently there's something called a Budu Seda Shoppu where, like, you can buy, like, used school uniforms for perverted reasons. I don't know how legal those places are, but let's not think about that. Anyway, this right here is the last quest. Not since we max our knowledge. But yeah, if you say that, you get some questions. Four questions. A student should study. Doppler effect. Yeah, that's when, like, an ambulance that's going past gets quieter and quieter. Yeah, the answer here is wind. Oh, okay, yeah, I, um, <laughs> know this because a lot of the personas we're summoning in our main party are from that. Now, this is actually really interesting. The answer here is upper, middle, and lower, and 
I actually think that a lot of other volumes of Japanese books are influenced by this because the Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn art books that I own are like marked as upper and lower. <laughs> They're just throwing all these questions at us that are really relevant to everything that's been going on. Interesting, okay, chariots. And chariot, ah, oh, yeah, I, I can honestly for the life of me never really remember the numbers, but I know that chariot is decently late in the order. But chariot is number seven. I probably could have worked that out by going back to Persona 3 and thinking about all the full moon bosses in my head. Okay, that's interesting. In this case, the answer is actually A. Hanafuda definitely doesn't. I don't even know what Mameluke is. Now we get victory fan, but more importantly, we have achieved ultimate victory in the quest department. Surprisingly, there is no trophy for completing all of the side quests, but we've done all of them now. So, no more farming in dungeons, that is it, all 69 quests completed. So with that, we can go ahead and, in this case, we're going to see the Sun Social Link. One last time, we'll play our trumpet with passion. Just like the invincible skeleton trumpeter we have within our heart. Sometimes all it takes to actually do better at something is to feel passionate and motivated about it. She doesn't have to do everything now, at least.
Much to my annoyance, Asura returns as the ultimate son persona from Persona 3. Why annoyance? I don't mind him from a gameplay standpoint, don't get me wrong. I just mean from a lore research standpoint, because exactly what mythological entity Asura is supposed to represent is extremely confusing. And I don't think there's any one definitive answer. Asuras are mythological beings in both Hinduism and Buddhism, but are significantly different in both. Not only that, some argue they may be derived from Zoroastrianism, where they're also quite a different class of being. In all cases, they're powerful divine beings, sometimes likened to titans. In Hinduism, they can be either good or evil, but are often at war with the devas, which are more overall benevolent. The Buddhist depiction leans more negative. There, they are lower level divine beings that are associated with negative emotions like jealousy and rage. Buddhist asuras are described as having three heads with three faces and either four or six arms, which is clearly what this design depicts. So obviously this is a Buddhist asura, right? Not exactly. The compendium in the Persona games consistently describes this Persona as the king of the asuras in Hindu myth, known as Maha Virokana, or one who shines on all. However, in some other Shin Megami Tensei spin-offs, such as Devil Survivor 2, Asura has a completely different compendium entry, depicting it as a generic Asura, the violent group of demons from Hindu lore. However, this design debuted in mainline Shin Megami Tensei, so maybe we'll find some answers there. Oh wait, this only makes it even more confusing. Firstly, Asura has been all over the place when it comes to demonic races in the mainline series. Dark, light, lore, chaos, he's been all of them and everything in between. He first appeared in Megami Tensei 2, where he was actually said to be the Zoroastrian supreme good entity Ahura Mazda, demonized by a record needle scratch god. However, Shin Megami Tensei 1 would have Asura as the leader of the Chaos faction, and a proud social Darwinist, while still maintaining the Ahura Mazda connection, Except the compendium still says he's Maha Virokana from Hindu mythology. Ah, oh, my head hurts. And ironically, despite all of the inconsistent betrayals in mainline Shin Megami Tensei, Asura has been one of the most consistent personas in the Persona series. He is always San Arcana, his stat spread is usually very similar to what you're seeing here, and he always has his signature move, Unshaken Will, which blocks all mental ailments. It's also Asura's skill card ability. I would highly recommend extracting and registering this card. It's a fantastic skill for any endgame persona. So let's be brutally honest here, Unshaken Will is really the main reason you want to fuse this guy. In terms of his other abilities, he has a win weakness and no natural way of covering that which is annoying, but he does learn Primal Force as well as Spell Master and some decent magic skills. Overall, still a solid persona, but Unshaken Will is the main reason you want to fuse him. Just like Yosuke, yet another one who wants to return the favor, who wants to help us when we need it. Senpai. Welcome home. As far as all of the max social link items go, I do really like that one. Okay, um, interesting. Glad those got here intact and didn't explode in the way. With Ayane's social link maxed out, we now have every social link maxed except for Hunger. I wonder if that implies anything. And, yep, that is maxed for Sun. So today we're going to be taking a bit of a break from making robots, well, making scooters in our case, to cook. And this should be the last time we need to cook here. 
Because if we get a trophy pop here, that's all we need. Okay, Odin is a kind of hot pot um, in a um, soy flavored broth. Though now I'm remembering uh, Odin juice from Persona 3, which was kind of an annoying quest. Uh, you'll hear my thoughts on it if you watch my playthrough of that game. So, in this case, we want to keep on a low flame and don't boil. Clear soup or den. There we go, cooking with gas. For that, you need to make five perfect meals. And with that, we are very, very free to spend our evenings now. You know, I said we were going to invite Kanji at least once. Well, I mean, she makes things that fully restore HP, so clearly she can cook decently well. And so, yet another school day draws to a close. And yep, they're gonna remind me of this. Well, we've already maxed out all of our social links. But there's one person who hasn't had a third awakening yet. Well, there it is, 100 hours, almost 101. So, it's felt weird to resume my recording now because it's just such a bittersweet feeling. We are almost at the end of this game. And I already talked to you. Did I talk to you guys? So let's just go around the school and speak to all of these students. Yeah, I don't think the snow is linked. Though snow does often have a lot of strange symbolism in video games. And most media. Could often be used to mean death or love. It's kind of interesting. The weather god, huh? Well, I mean, we did kind of fight a god of fog. Two of them, in fact. Yeah, that is, that is a really tough situation to be in. It is interesting how the endings of most of these Persona games are tied to spring starting. It's not really the case in the Southern Hemisphere where I live, where the end of the year is actually summer and then it goes into autumn. Yes, yes we do, although we're very biased in that regard. And now, Senpai Girl. This is an arc that's been going on for pretty much the whole game. And yep, she actually, like most of us, accepted her shadow without even needing to face it. There's still a lot of facing your flaws plots that happen amongst even the unnamed NPCs of the school. It's just really, really interesting. I hope you don't mind that I'm going around talking to all of these people, but I feel like it is very important. It's no Trails game, but there are a lot of subplots that are going ar uh, on around town. And now they're finally reaching their conclusion. Hmm, well, I guess you should talk to them, maybe. And I don't think, uh, yep, nope, funky student is gone. We can try the first floor, though. Talk to the guy with his grandmother. You, the guy who likes mountains. Yeah, probably best not to climb mountains in this weather. I mean, it is true, there is something kind of cool about mountains. One thing that I've always wished was in more games is... In Australia, when I sort of drive around more, I wouldn't say rural, but like out of town areas, there are often mountains that are covered in trees. I feel like you don't see a lot of forest mountains as settings in video games. 
And you're, um, getting on with your art with Master Daidara, which I think actually comes from Daidara Bochi, which I mostly know from Orkami as being a giant rabbit mech. Okay, um, just be careful you don't end up committing arson. Well, good thing this isn't Persona 2 or that rumor would become true. Huh, that, that is actually interesting to think about, although, on the other hand, it would actually be kind of disturbing if, like, in Persona 2, would it be possible for, like, you to end up, like, dating someone just because people thought you were dating, if rumors were coming true? Well, yeah, good to get some more closure on that. Oh yeah, you can actually use this hallway to spend time with the club. I think that's actually how you always spend time with the club uh, in Persona 3, but here we could just talk to the, the people directly. Yeah, no more your affection, at least um, not until this snow clears. Yeah, everyone's thinking it's like that fog, but no, it's just relatively typical winter. Well, now the fog has cleared, maybe some other things are clearing up for you too. Well, you know, maybe there's someone else um, close by who can cheer you up. <laughs> Just when I was talking about hooking up people due to rumours. I'm sure the sun will, it's cloudy now, so it, we're past those days where the weather is constantly snow. That is kind of nice. Though what grows around comes around always made me think about that uh, scroll in the fighting dojo. As a kid I had no idea what that meant. Well, uh, looks like they're some of the few people who haven't really resolved their issues. Kanji's available for a bike hangout today, but his bike skills aren't that great. Seems like everyone's kind of finding happiness recently. Ah uh, yes, do you trust the reviews or your friends? And you know, sometimes you'll never know whether or not you'll like something unless you try it yourself. Which is actually kind of funny because that's how I honestly feel about this game. Can you believe that I used to not like P4? In fact, I said as much during the Persona 3 playthrough. I think I'm going to talk more about that, um, a bit later on. But this playthrough has been a very interesting experience for me. Uh, she's not back yet, unfortunately. My opinions on, um, Persona 4 have actually changed quite a lot, and my opinions on doing a playthrough for it have also changed a ton. I'll just say that when I was actually doing a practice run for this earlier this year, I was reconsidering doing this game. I got to the middle part of the year, like after Risei's Dungeon, and everything just felt kind of boring to me, and I was worried that I wouldn't have a lot to talk about, but now, it's been over a hundred parts, in fact it would have been like a hundred and twenty at this point, and I still have more things to talk about. In fact, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to get all of my thoughts on this game out by the time it's over. It's just kind of amazing. Again, sometimes you won't know whether you'll enjoy something until you actually do it. Well, maybe he can rest in that hot spring that we kind of helped him make. 
Don't think he was the one who was yelling about the Kingdom of Juneus invading in the anime. Oh, you're here. <laughs> um... Well, at least that guy has a mostly happy ending, though I still worry about his home life. The enemy reminds me of a, um... <laughs> there's a scene in uh, in one of the... Which I haven't actually watched much of the Equestria Girls movies, but, um... That I admit was actually kind of funny, where there's a snowball fight that's basically treated like a war. Yes, it doesn't do much of anything in Hulk and Air except the overcast. Oh yeah, if there are mountains in between us and Okina though, because we do go through a tunnel. Yeah, like, there, there's a city in Australia that I often go to, Canberra, the capital, which is basically surrounded by mountains, and because of that it has very, very different weather to the rest of the neighbouring regions. It gets extremely cold in winter. So, yeah, the mountains definitely would be affecting things. I remember, like, mountains affect something, like, called the rain shadow effect from watching Magic School Bus as a kid, but oh, I forgot what that is. That was in the episode on deserts, I think. Which is honestly, like, kind of a depressing episode looking back on it, because, like, it's all about, um, the sort of more cynical one of the students trying to, um, teach the more optimistic student that deserts are horrible places where all of the animals are constantly suffering. It's less disturbing than I made it sound, but, um, yeah. I, I did kind of like that episode. I didn't watch, like, all of the Magic School Bus episodes, but I remember that one. I remember the one with the junkyard where they go inside the bus. That was always one of my favorites. Yeah, we caught enough fish for the cat, so, um, no need to have any more lessons with that guy. Well, you know, maybe they just care about you. Okay, good that she recovered. Ah, well, that's, 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 uh, that's interesting. Especially since, like, the concept of house husbands is not very common in Japan, from what I can tell. Okay, I think that should be pretty much everyone, except the people at Orkina City. Do, uh, today could be a Black Frost double dip day, I guess, so I could try that. We're going to be coming back here for a final movie anyway. That's only one attempt today, and I think the odds on one attempt days are still pretty, are actually lower than two attempt days. So, after all of that, we're going to get the final Persona upgrade. Sensei. Oh, I remember this one now! Okay, yeah, this one is really good. Woohoo! It's so huge! So wide! So salty! Smash Bros fanbase? I'm sorry. Wait! The salt was actually me sweating. It's tough to skate against the wind. Oh yeah, well, we must have <laughs> I either dragged him the whole way here or he must have skated this whole way. Wow, the winter sea is really cool too. Coming here with everyone was fun, but it's exciting to be here alone with you too. This must be the true charm of the winter sea. Sensei, over here! Let's do that thing people are supposed to do on the beach and run around in the surf! Come on! Try and catch me! Sensei, why is the sea so huge?
The world. I know what that is. It's where everything is. And everything in it is connected. The sea's sparkly. I didn't know anything about anything until I met you and everyone else. Fun things, feelings that make me want to cry, how the sea is so beautiful. I didn't know anything, and I never thought about wanting to learn either. I can feel all kinds of things in me now. All these feelings created after I met all of you. I think that's my life. It's these different feelings that keep me going. There are still tons of things I don't understand. And I don't know what I'm going to do from here either. But I've decided that I'm going to do the best with this life that I can. Even though I was scared, I took a step forward and discovered such a wonderful, shiny world. That line, shiny, is actually significant. It's brought up in Persona Q when Teddy's talking to Igis. It's sort of a sign that, despite our memories from there being gone, the experiences that we had are still ingrained in us. That's why you too, Sensei. Sensei! <laughs> because you're going away soon, I want you to know, Sensei. But I felt like if I told you, then you'd leave for good. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? Do you understand this tremendous love I'm professing? <laughs> but I'll be okay. It's sad, but being sad is part of life, too. I've made my decision to stop relying on you so much, Sensei. I will now enter the independent Teddy chapter of my life, so that this time, I can be your sensei. Kamui Miracle. This is a skill that a lot of people write off as being terrible. It costs 25 SP and it has random effects. Either all allies and or all foes have their HP and SP fully recovered. All allies and or all foes are knocked down. All allies and or all foes are inflicted with random status ailments or nothing at all. So, this is a bit of a joke skill, but I actually want to say something. I think it does have one niche use, and that is free SP restoration. Another thing the Fox should feel bad about, because we're basically putting that out of business again. If you're running very low on SP, you can go to an early game dungeon and fight some weak enemies and just spam this skill, provided that Teddy has at least 25 SP and eventually you're bound to get the full SP recovery. This in particular is actually quite useful during the golden exclusive dungeon, and for that reason I'm gonna keep this skill for now. Teddy does get three immunities in this form too, draining ice and nulling wind and darkness. And in terms of mythology, this one's kind of interesting. So, Kamui Mosir refers to the land of the Kamui in Ainu mythology, however its name comes from the Ainu creation myth. 
At the beginning of the world, there was only water and earth mixed together in kind of a sludgy mass. Then the first Kamui sent down a bird spirit, Moshiri Ko Kamui. This wagtail bird stomped on this swampy state, pounding the earth, and after much effort, areas of dry land appeared. So, in a way, this persona could also represent that bird spirit, Moshiri Ko Kamui. And this is the problem, because all of these skills are really good. Like, objectively speaking, I should delete this, but I do really want to show off its niche use in that one dungeon. And honestly, I kind of want to get rid of this because I feel Teddy's more at this point a supporter than he is an attacker. And I'm going to have Naoto for high ice damage anyway. Holy moly! Something came out! Yes, a giant king missile. I'm an all new model now! Teddy version 3! Or is it 4? In a way, it actually could be 4, if you count uh, pre-Persona Teddy, the Teddy that was a navigator as his first version. Maybe I should study counting first. Oh, but even though I've entered my independent phase, I'm still gonna have Yosuke take care of me. And I can just hear him screaming, No! I'm not that independent yet. So overall, I really, really like that scene. It's one of the prime reasons why I'm kind of sorry for playing Persona Q first on this channel, because You're back. it must have given you all a really, really bad impression of Teddy. And while I go out and get a scooter, I can guess I can keep talking. Yes, he still does have his bad moments, but he does have some really great ones too, and I still describe it as Persona Q took all of his negative traits and none of his positive ones. His positive ones are things like that search for identity he has over the course of this whole story. In a way, Teddy represents, like, the complete antithesis of what Adachi was trying to do by turning everyone into shadows. Teddy started out as just a mere shadow, ignorant of everything and not wanting to learn anything. And then he met us and he learned to love learning. He wanted to experience the world, learn new things, form relationships. He became his own person. And in a way, it's it's kind of a great sort of, not exactly like a macrocosm of everything that these characters go through, because Persona 4 really is a game about a sort of search for identity. Something that's interesting is that the Steam version of this game describes it as a coming-of-age story, and I don't know if that's exactly the best way to describe it, because I think it's not a coming-of-age story for the protagonist. Persona 3, I think, is. But four, it's more about everyone else's journeys and their growth. Yu is more the therapist. He's the one who helps them uh, realize... He's the one who helps them realize um, what they want to do in life and helps them grow and change. But he himself, by virtue of being a silent protagonist, doesn't really have his own character arc. The anime did give him one, though, which is good. While I do feel that in Persona 3, the protagonist does have a bit of an implied arc of his own. Well, speaking of people that we help find themselves... Yeah, that was when Marie entered her really angsty phase. But I mean, it was kind of understandable. She was getting really frustrated over her memories not returning. And so, Margaret is closing in. But we still need to wait quite a bit longer. Honestly, I feel like we didn't really need that phone call. It's still a little while until we discover her. 
But honestly, this part of the game does feel very... It feels very relaxed. And it's definitely not quite as plot-heavy as the Januaries of um, Persona 3 and Persona 5 Royal, but in a way it's kind of nice. We had a huge stretch of plot through the whole Adachi arc. Now we're finally getting a breather after that. It's been such a long time since we really had a breather. It is just kind of nice to wind down before the story draws to a close. So, European snow in spring. Yes, red snow is actually a thing. I think black snow might also be a thing. I talked about black frost um, during Mitsuo's dungeon. Not sure about green snow, though. That sounds like an alien thing. By the way, pay attention to what he's saying here. Yeah, look up the red snow if you want to. It actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> well, you know, everything almost turned red during um, Adachi's dungeon. I mean, yeah, we're remembering a lot of things now. You know, I kind of wonder, if you got to rank 10 with a party member during this month, would you still have access to- I'm pretty sure you would still have access to their third tier awakening. But yeah, speaking of which, everyone has now had their awakenings now. And so, with all of those awakenings, and with all of our social links completed, except for Adachi's, we now officially have free time. We can do anything we want to with our day now. Also, there's a new costume available here, but I think it was actually available a lot earlier. The Ceremonial Kimono, I think you actually have to have Yukiko's Social Link at a certain rank for this one. It might be maxed, but I don't know if it needs to be maxed or not, but it does need to be at a certain rank, I think. Yeah, it's nowhere near as expensive as the main set, but I'm gonna have to go into the dungeon one more time and farm a lot of money, and I'll probably do that protagonist solo, just so that nobody else gets overleveled. I know that he's kind of getting a bit overleveled, but... Like, again, his stats depend on his personas, and I'm not really using a ton of super high-level personas right now. Okay, who needs a movie the most? Because I am going to be seeing a movie that, uh, really, technically nobody needs a movie, but... <laughs> well, they definitely do when you're in a story like this. Hmm. We're gonna... I think I'll take Kanji to the movies this time. But yes, um, you can't invite anybody who's seen the same movie before. Sub. Okay, see ya. He probably knew about the bike and likely invited him long in advance. Thanks for waiting. Though sometimes it is nice to get to a movie late these days because they tend to show tons of ads. Especially, like, big things like Marvel movies, sometimes those can have, like... I remember when I first saw... This isn't, like, a Marvel movie or anything, but when I first saw The Incredibles, like, my, my dad got extremely angry in that cinema because there were about 30 minutes of ads before that. It was just... Ugh. But, guaranteed level up and some extra strength, too. I think with movies, it is possible for Kanji to actually cap his strength. Hmm. There aren't a lot of party members who are capable of capping stats in this game. I don't even know yeah. if Yukio can cap magic without accessories. Now, is that enough for the trophy? It is, okay. So now we officially are totally free. Welcome back. You know, I might actually work at the hospital just for the extra money. I mean, uh, it's 10,000 yen though, and that's uh, like, I think one Sea Guardian is that much. Because I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing over the next few days, too. Maybe farming some Sea Guardians for cash might not be a bad idea. So some people are worried whether or not I'll be able to finish all of the models by the end of the game. I actually am only one day behind on model making, and there are some free nights later in Hurricane Harlan's Guide, so I should be fine on this. And so today is the 26th. This is going to be kind of a cool day because... Oh, great, I made an accidental pun. 
We're getting Bufudine on Naoto today. I looked it up and it turns out that today is a day when Naoto is available for a bike ride. Finally, we're gonna actually do one of these. Hello. So yeah, in this month you go to the hot spring. I think you go to the beach in the warmer months. Yes, we would. It's not like, well, I mean, even if we were dating, we probably wouldn't bathe in the same hot spring because that would um probably get us kicked out. It is kind of a shame we don't have much time for these in this schedule, but... It's still a decently packed schedule, even with all this free time towards the end of the game. I'm not sure if I'll do any more bike rides, because many other people's first bike skills are not great, and those are really the only ones I probably will have the potential to get. I mean, Yukiko gets Valiant Dance. I mean, if I could fit in two with Yukiko, can I do that? No, I only have one more potential bike day with Yukiko, so I won't be able to. Yes, no crazy hot spring antics with the girls all becoming predatory lesbians for no reason. Why does that happen in every anime hot spring scene? And also no guys to peep on you. Uh, don't fall asleep in a hot spring, that might be a little weird. So here is the important choice. If you say talk about your memories, they can reload a skill they deleted earlier. So I could get back Hollow Boost or Moodle Boost if I wanted. But if you say talk about the future, they learn one of their bike skills. Mm. About Kanji? Sorry. <laughs> there is Bufudine. So, the reason why I'm going for this, even though Garudine's probably better because Yosuke, I mean, his magic is actually decent, but, um, and he does have boost and amp for that, so maybe, no, actually, Garudine's not better. But it is less represented across the party than Bufu is. Chie can get Bufudine via bike skills too, but it's only single target. She never gets my Bufudine. But yeah, the reason why you want Bufudine on Naoto is because of the Frost Shot weapon. You're back. And on that note, I may as well equip that. Oh, the fridge is full of food, but we can't actually use that. Well, I mean, we could, but I want to make models instead. That is going to be uh, dropping her plus 5 to all stats, which I really like, but plus 25% ice damage. That means that... Naoto now has her best single target skill in the game. Oh, putty and filler, okay then. Yeah, I'm still not great at using that for um, for models. I do quite like the liquid green stuff that Games Workshop put out, though. So I believe this would be scooter number three. We're getting there. And so here we are, back at school. We are officially in free time now. So, yeah, we can decide what to do with that day. There's a few things that I plan on doing. I will want to go to the dungeon one day, just so that I can, um... Actually, is there a good fusion forecast today? I might want to check if there are any good fusion forecasts coming up. But just so I can get some more money. But I'm also going to want to fish, because you can get some interesting things via fishing. Bonus stats, bonus ice skill for using a fortune arcana. Bonus so- ooh. Bonus social link experience is a very good thing. Maybe tomorrow might be a good day for going to the dungeon. We could also go to Cafe Chagall. And I will want to do that a few times. I also kind of want to try out gazing out to sea to see if I can get Yoshitsune to learn, um, Huss or Tobi that way. Although I'll probably get it by grinding in the TV world regardless. So, let's fish. I probably have a lot of bugs right now. Oh right, it's not raining, so I don't think I'll be able to get Sea Guardians here. 
But I'm just going to use the lowest rank of bait here first, because the first hook you get on your line will usually always be a certain thing. Uh, by forgetting to press circle, because it's been ages since I fished, I think I actually missed, uh, missed my opportunity for it. Basically, you're guaranteed for the first thing to be a joke weapon. Got a few tuna, got a few octopi. Let's continue making scooters. It's completely optional to make all of these. There's no trophy for it, but I just kind of wanted to show what all of the scooters look like. One of the few things that we have left to do during uh, the main game. That doesn't require New Game Plus, at least. As far as trophy progress goes, I think really the few trophies that we should have left are... Hmm. I might even actually be able to show, like, my trophy list or something. I might do that at the start of the next part, but I'm guessing all I have left to get are Hardcore Rosette Fan and the one for registering 100 skill cards, which, like, I'm not getting. There's no way I'm getting that. Thankfully, skill cards carry over to New Game Plus. I just went and sold some fish at Daidara. Now, I'll see you all next time in the TV world for some money grinding and more compendium completion.